Yo, how's it going everybody? It's Dino here, and we back with another video with some crazy clips from all over the world. I hope everyone is doing well. Let's hop right into it. Let me explain. These are 3,500 year old balls representing the platonic solids centuries before Plato invented them. The platonic solids are the framework for energy to flow to, to make the shapes that we see around us every day. This is the hydrogen version of that. And you probably learned the periodic table of elements using this shitty confusing bit. This is how we view it vibrationally. The top is the gases and these are the heavier elements down here. Now, the more energy you add to the system, the more complex the geometry gets. Now, we illustrate this in spheres. Think about like a molecule diagram, how you learn that. There's internal geometry I showed you in cymatics. Now, this is a DNA strand. That is the top-down view of the DNA strand. It looks a lot like a mandala because that mandala represents a frequency that you can resonate with. Experience this phenomenon in music. You experience a stimulus in the environment, let's say like a breakup. Stimulus creates a feeling, which is just a chemical or molecule, and then these sad tones will then resonate with those molecules. I think that's how it works. Yeah, I agree with what he's saying. That's some pretty cool stuff right there. You guys should go look into that. Can you describe for us what you see as if when the disclosure moment happens there's going to be an aha moment i think right where there's a before this moment and then there's an after and at the, every day after that the world is just going to be a different place and i don't know what, there's, the, going what be, there's going to be a video of an actual interview of an actual extraterrestrial being you there's know a, this yes you know so i mean i know that that exists uh and uh, and that's part of the crown jewels that they're not going to want to reveal at this point, I don't really think anybody is going to care, dude. <laughs> Fucking out him. Jim Carrey called me up last week. I talked to him for five and a half hours. He's like begging me to like get a deal with Q. Like he's afraid of the fucking brackets. I'm like, and it's just like yammering on with the crap, but like not owning up or doing anything fucking meaningful. Me, me. Meanwhile, just lying to everybody. Guys, you are fucking cowards. You're going down, you're gonna fucking die. That's it, you're gonna die. If you ate kids, you're gonna fucking die. You can't get over that shit. That's a death sentence. You cannot fucking live. But what I'll tell you that you can do is possibly save your soul. You can save your soul, and I can help you save your soul. You will fucking die, though, so get over it. I know you all are afraid that you sold your soul, but I think you can get it. Ooh, that's some heavy words right there but you know it's it's pretty much true news reporters will not say regarding jeffrey epstein israeli mossad that's right they'll dance around all the issues but they will not say Israeli Mossad. Epstein was a spy. Jocelyn Maxwell was his handler. Her father was Robert Maxwell. That's Maxwell right there. His real name was young Ludwig Eimann Benjamin Hawk. That's right. That's his real name. He was an Israeli spy. He also was a billionaire and died mysteriously by falling off his yacht naked into the ocean which his yacht was the Lady Jocelyn, named for his daughter. Look, it's an Israeli spy operation, and these guys are unwilling to say it. They're afraid of saying the words. They try to get the views on the Internet, on social media, but they don't want to confront the truth. Podcasters, news reporters will not say. Mm-hmm, they will not say. Fires a beam of light at the warhead, hits it, fires another beam of light, and then flies out the way it came in. Yo, that was cool. And the warhead tumbles out of the out of space. No, that was pretty cool looking, man. Think you're safe in your own home? Well, think again. This video portrays the house of a family who locks their door religiously at night. Yet on the couch lays a 15-year-old Anaya Robinson, who is visited by an intruder in the night. The hooded man can be seen with his hands in his pockets, just staring at the young girl on the couch sleeping. He goes unnoticed for a short while, but not pictured in the video, 
the young woman wakes up at the sound of his footsteps throughout the house. She then yells for her mom and dad to help, and the hooded man hightails it out of the house. Unfortunately, this is the only evidence presented in the case, and the police were not able to identify the man. Upon further investigation, the police learned that this man was not out for valuables, as he did not steal a single thing in the home. Rather, he took a peeping Tom to the next level. Though they did not find the man, 15-year-old Anaya Robinson was completely safe after this incident. But this is just another incident, proving to keep your doors locked and be safe. Keep your doors locked when you are in your home. Keep your windows locked when you are in your home because it ain't safe out there no more. When I was a little kid, we used to leave our front door open in the middle of the night and like the whole neighborhood was like that. We'd just be watching TV with the front door wide open. But it ain't like that anymore, y'all. Lock your doors. License is one of the major instruments that is used politically to sustain slavery. When they gave you that driver's license, it was to incorporate you as a corporate person, was not an instrument for identification. It has a picture that represents you, and then it has some phonetic writing on the front that sounds like the name that you have, but that's not you. The picture can't represent you, and the name does not represent you. That name represents a private corporation or what they call often a straw man too. You notice that grammatically it's incorrect. Why is it incorrect? You capitalize nouns. If you don't capitalize a noun, then it must not be a noun. But if all the letters are capitalized, it's not a proper noun, is it? It's grammatically incorrect if it's directed as a, at a person. Why do you think that was done? Do you think it's accidental? The fact that it expires proves what to you relative to identity? Does your identity expire? Well, why does your identity expire with the driver's license? Because it's not an identification. It's a proof of contract. It's a prima facie instrument used to regulate your economy. They listed you as Negroes, Blacks, and Colors as corporations and list you as foreigners and that your working is a corporate activity for capital gains. By you being Smith, Jones, and Johnson, it automatically puts you as a ward of the state so they can impose upon you that license in the first place. You're actually paying a foreign European who you keep calling white and claim to mm hmm you talking about them straw man laws. Y'all should go read about them. Please, please, please. That's a, some golden information to have. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I don't know if that's real or not. They're building that big ass super prison that's gonna be ran by robots and they're gonna fill yeah. them bitches up a hundred thousand inmates in one goddamn prison. So what you think what you think what what you think gonna happen when robots gonna start knocking on holes, those? All y'all hoes that's sitting up there stealing out of Walmart thinking they ain't coming. <laughs> Bitch, everything you didn't scan, them grand thefts and petty thefts, they're going to they be knocking court <laughs> dates and robots that's going to shock you with a taser. It's going to come to your door. Y'all hoes is going to have warrants, and they're going to fill up them goddamn prison. All you scammers and, 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 and PPP loaners and all you fake business havers and all you bitches that want to go steal and not stole and only scan a few things across the scanner like this right here, y'all going to start getting court dates in the mail, and they're going to fill them motherfucking prisons up. Everything is Show running at a real. control room. They pushing buttons. Is opening doors, locking doors, robots is dropping trays off to robots. your motherfucking meal. The, the gate open so you can go outside. This gate closed, no more humans. Robots. Y'all already see the cows and the chickens and the farmers is gone. All you seeing is battery and solar goddamn fields everywhere. That's gonna charge yeah, them robots up. That's gonna shock the shit out you and come lock your Surely. ass up in that mega prison that they're building in them five states. Hundred thousand inmates. I said, "Oh my God!" You know, prisons now might have four thousand, three. We talking about a hundred thousand and fifty thousand motherfucking rooms for niggas. It's a lot of people. You think they ain't filling them holes up in a minute? <laughs> All right, well, keep, on, saying, right. Everything keep you, on sitting right here playing. Keep on, keep on. Everything mm -hmm. you should be talking about. 
came out to be true. They gonna so lie about Judge Kaya Thomas. When I seen them big ass billion dollar prison facilities, I say, oh, they finna fill these hoes up, ain't them? I said, oh, I'm going back under the Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Got some googling to do. Hollywood Records contract, and I'm signing it because I'm going to have my first record ever and selling my soul to Hollywood Records. That's sad. I'd say that too. So I saw this the day that it was posted, like within a couple hours that it was posted on the internet. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Um, I did see it when it was brand new, though, like within hours of it originally being posted online in like 2008 or something like that. And then it just started getting spread everywhere and on the news and media outlets. I still don't know what to think, but there are a bunch of camera angles, so. To try and spark some interest in alternative history here are some photos of American cities in the late 1800s early 1900s. Seattle, Chicago, San Francisco, Louisiana, Atlanta, you get the gist? They all looked like this. The whole world did. Even third world countries like Ethiopia. 2024 is about to be a wild shitstorm of never-ending events. Election year has always been the most eventful years in history, because at this time is when American politics rely on events to influence the American population into voting for a particular party. For example, 2020 has COVID-19, WW3, BLM, gun crime, vaccine, etc. These events gave the Democrats an upper hand based on how Trump handled these situations and because of that, they used it as leverage to not only get Trump impeached from office, but also arrested. And so far, they already started 11 days left in 2023 with Colorado's vote to bar Trump from being elected. There are talks of a possible martial law being in effect in 2024, with the increased amounts of military aged men crossing over the Texas border, and recently the Texas governor has made it illegal to cross over to the U.S., is something afoot? 2024 will be a wild. The government is holding uh, nine alien spacecraft uh, that are repelled by uh, a modified gravity generator. Uh, it's being, the work is being conducted 15 miles south of Room Lake at that isolated area only, designated as S4, uh, that at least one of those crafts operate. According to what Lazar said, these alien craft ran on element 115. And there's no evidence that we have this even occurring naturally anywhere on Earth. Nope. But it is on the periodic table now. Hmm. Inside the reactor, element 115 is bombarded with a proton. 
which plugs into the nucleus of the 115 atom and becomes element 116, which immediately decays and releases or radiates small amounts of antimatter. The antimatter is released in a vacuum into a tuned tube, which keeps it from reacting with the matter that surrounds it. It is then directed towards a gaseous matter target at the end of the tube. The matter and antimatter collide and annihilate, totally converting to energy. The heat from this reaction is converted into electrical energy in a near 100% efficient thermoelectric generator. This is a device that converts heat directly into electrical energy. This particular... It's all that Bob Lazar stuff. Some good stuff to look at. the kind of things you can do with AR. Telling y'all that AR technology is wild. There's so many uses for it. There's a massive change for the better happening on the planet right now. This change won't be on the news, and it hasn't gone viral. And if you don't look for it, you won't even notice it's happening. This change is quietly happening in the hearts of humanity. People are realizing that we become what we focus our attention on. And we influence this reality based on who we become. So people are realizing that fighting is senseless and focusing on the chaos is futile. Rather, people are quietly focusing on creating their version of heaven on earth. They are healing themselves and focusing on creating more beauty. People are realizing that awakening to their own divinity is what protects them from manipulation and allows them to become the change they want to see. It's strength in numbers to create such a beautiful world that it will be obvious for others to join, to the point where one day they will hold a war and no one will come. The frequencies of war, greed and manipulation will no longer be able to exist in a reality full of sovereign awakened beings living connected to their divinity. Tell us what we should know, what com quantum computing will do differently from regular old computing. Well, computers have gone through three stages. Uh, the first stage was analog computers when we computed on sticks, levers, gears. We would turn the crank to do a calculation. But the abacus was one of those too, right? The abacus, a the mechanical. The abacus, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Slide rules, right? Mm -hmm. Then comes electricity so it, and the transistor. So all of a sudden, everything becomes a matter of zeros and ones, zeros and ones, and digital. And that's the computer revolution of today. Now. We are beginning to enter the third stage in the evolution of the computer. No longer computing on transistors, computing on atoms. This is the ultimate computer. You can't do better than that, computing on atoms. And that's what the quantum computer is all about. They exist already. They are millions of times more powerful than our most powerful digital computer on certain tasks. So there's a race, a race between China, between IBM, Google, Microsoft, a race to see who can get the first all-purpose quantum computer to put on the marketplace, which will change everything. The CIA is interested in this. All the big uh, commercial 
uh, banks are interested in this, aerospace, uh, energy, you name it, um, everyone is interested in who is going to be first to, to bring out a commercialized quantum computer that could outrace any normal computer by a factor of a million. Yeah, I still don't know about those quantum computers, though, because there's no operating system or really way to control them yet, and they're still working on that. So they're kind of, I don't know, I guess useless right now. I'm not real sure. It doesn't necessarily start at a steam engine right. and go to an internal combustion engine and then, you know, electric power, nuclear power, and go up the ladder that we right. come in. If the stuff is true about the origin and the binary star system and they have heavier elements that we don't have and this element stable element 115 is a naturally occurring material, maybe that's the first thing they started experimenting with. And the version of their steam engine, their first product was something that operated like this. And actually when they came to Earth to look around or, you know, whatever, they were amazed at the stuff we were doing. These guys burned stuff and squirted out the back to go forward. So, right. um, Right. You know, who says they follow any kind of normal progression like that? Yep. Yeah. More on that Bob Lazar stuff, talking about Element 115 or Moscovium. In The Truman Show, there's a specific moment where Truman has that epiphany. So in that movie, Truman's walking down the road, and all of a sudden, a light fixture falls out of the sky and crashes right in front of him. It had really nothing to do with the light. The light was a symbol. It wasn't really supposed to be a light. It was supposed to be a light in his head. It's like that moment of, aha, or something that makes him realize that it's not real, right? So Truman picks up the light, and you, of course, you're not going to ever see this unless you pause it at the exact moment. It's, it's called an Easter egg, and it's an Easter egg they put in for very specific people to see. And on this light, which is the light where Truman has that awakening moment, it says Sirius Canis Major. For that to be random, to me, is impossible. Here I am, the thing that was a spark for me was the Dogon with Sirius Canis Major. Yeah, man. That's one of my favorite movies. This is exactly what's going on in our country of why we're so divided. We are living in a dual economy. There is a good economy and a bad economy. Who's living in a good economy? Anyone who bought a house from the year 2020 and before is significantly doing better in today's economy. Why? Because they're not burdened with the astronomical mortgage price or astronomical rent price. Number two, those of you who do not have college debt, you are not burdened by the college debt or you have a few hundred bucks. I have seen people even comment that they have $1,400 a month in student loan payments. The average in the country is 503. That is a huge burden, especially if the incomes aren't keeping up. And the last one that is running rampant in our country is the daycare cost. It is 350 a week for an infant. Not a private, not a bougie, not a privileged, just just the normal go to daycare is 350 for an infant. I see parents telling me in their comments they're spending $4,000 a month on two or three children for daycare. So if your kids are out of school or not in daycare and you get to save that money, not have the high rent prices and no college, 75k you are crushing it in today's economy. But what are people going to point to, especially in an election year, how great the economy is, which is good for half the country. But there's another half that we cannot ignore and can't write them off as complaining. We need to literally pay attention to what's going on, not because of this year alone, but because where we're going to be in five years if we don't make a change. It's true, man. It's so much harder now than it was. I think it's really freaky that people don't talk more about the connections that Epstein had in so many different worlds. So if somehow you don't know the Jeffrey Epstein story, he was arrested in 2019 and thought to be the head of a global pedophile network. And just a short while after he was arrested, he was found dead in his prison cell. Allegedly, he had taken his own life. Many people don't think that he did. And many people think that Epstein was murdered because he had so much blackmail evidence on so many politicians, actors, musicians. So let's dig a little bit deeper into all of this. So this is Shantae Davis. She's one of Epstein's accusers. She was there on so many of Epstein's trips. She alleged that he assaulted her many, many times over the years when she was underage. And she saw lots of horrific things that were going on on the island, in his private planes, on these trips. Here's a photo of Shantae and Epstein, but I want to talk today about a trip to Africa that this group took. So apparently some years ago, Shantae, Jeffrey Epstein, Ghislaine Maxwell, and some others took a philanthropic trip to Africa. But who was on this trip? Well, Bill Clinton was on this trip. There's photo evidence of that. I mean, here's a photo literally of Shantae massaging Bill Clinton's back while they were on this trip. Strange photo. 
Kevin Spacey was also on this trip. You can see Bill Clinton behind him. Here's another photo of Kevin Spacey and Ghislaine Maxwell. Kind of weird, right? Even Chris Tucker was on this trip. This is him and Shantae and some of the other women that were with Epstein and his crew. So my question is, what exactly happened in Africa? What were they doing? There are no real photos of any philanthropic event that they were attending. And for the life of me, I can't find any information about where they were going or what this big event with Hollywood celebrities and ex-presidents was. And I mean, there are just too many weird things about this. When Epstein's house was raided, they found this painting hanging up in his home. This has been confirmed. Even the artist who painted it has confirmed that Epstein purchased this from him. And people think that Epstein was killed because when he was hanging out brushing elbows with all these elite people like ex-presidents, celebrities, other people that were super powerful, he was recording almost all the time. Shantae, who was present for a lot of this, even said that Epstein had cameras in places like the bathrooms, the toilets, the massage rooms, the living rooms, everywhere on his property was being recorded 24-7. So I think it's very reasonable to think that with what was going on with Epstein, he would have a lot of damning photos and videos, evidence of powerful people doing terrible things. And what's one way to get him to shut up? Well, you can kill him. I don't know. I just think this story about this philanthropy trip to Africa is so strange. Why did they go? Why all these famous people? Why is there no press about anything ever happening there? And once again, why with Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah. Why? That is really strange. There's a lot of well-known people. Conspiracy theory about your husband. <laughs> and I feel like I actually just need to bring up the picture that okay, he let's, might let's... be William Shakespeare reincarnated. Well, because look. <laughs> It's kind of nuts, right? I thought it was... I mean... It, it took seeing the photo for I me to go, oh, I should take this seriously. <laughs> I did a little digging. What'd you learn? Uh, so, Anne Juliet is a play where what if Juliet didn't die with Romeo? And a lot of it is influenced by Shakespeare's wife. And her name is Anne Hathaway. <laughs> it's weird, right? Hot. I <laughs> <laughs> We're not commenting on that. It's like, we're back! <laughs> no, it would not. It would be great if it was true, but even if it's not, still kind of great. <laughs> I love that your husband I just does. I love that he's, he's cute. I don't want to, like, go on about it, but yeah. The last time we talked, the way you talked about him. I'm blushing. And you've been together. <laughs> you just celebrated 11 years? Uh, 11 years married, 15 years together. 15! 15 years together. I Nah, bro, them some vampires talk about reincarnated. No, nah, them some vampires right there. That's crazy. Stationary object. I immediately noticed this. I'm with my neighbor James. That just appeared. And now it's moving uh, east. You got a plane uh, heading west below it. It was the plane um, that caught my eye initially, and then as soon as I glanced uh, left, I uh, immediately knew that's not supposed to be there, and it was stationary. This is the uh, second or third encounter of the evening. It's Sunday, January 21st, 2024. I'm going to say somewhere around 6.15 p.m. pretty cool can't really tell what it is because of the video no not like not zoomed in or anything but that's still pretty cool you know uh, this morning the 193 member states of the united nations approved the political declaration on pandemic prevention preparedness and response in may 2024 
the 194 member states of the WHO will have their final vote on both of these international agreements. This process takes place behind closed doors. It is not reported nor discussed in our newspapers, in our national parliaments, in universities, nor in society. The WHO claims in these two legal instruments an absolute and non-questionable leadership in all health matters as soon as WHO refers itself to pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response. Hmm, that sounds pretty scary. I'm not sure about that. I got one more for you guys. So there's some more of that AR technology, that augmented reality stuff. See, I think that that stuff's going to be used to be able to see and interact with the interdimensional beings that we can't see with our eyes. Not really sure it's a good thing, but, you know, it does have some good uses. Anyways that's another video i really appreciate you guys for coming through and watching all these videos that i post it means a lot to me you know I'd, I'd appreciate it if more of you would subscribe but it's all good anyways i hope that everyone's having a great day afternoon morning evening whatever it might be for you hope it's good until next time peace